Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Inside Man United. My name is Rowan Brennan. Thank you very much again for joining us. How did our Christmas go? Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you had a fantastic time over the festive season. Got loads of gifts and uh, ate yourself silly and uh, are kind of gearing up for New Year's, I suppose. But if you're anything like me, I've no interest in New Year's. I'm too fat, broke and knackered. Uh, to be doing anything on New Year's Eve. But uh, hope you had a great time uh, with you and yours, your loved ones, and uh, it's very good to have you back uh, at the channel. And to boot, what a result against Aston Villa. 2-0 down. It was testing my faith in Ten Hag. I've been a very vocal supporter of Ten Hag on this channel, on Twitter. Um, and yeah, with with, with with how we played and the, and the set pieces that we'd conceded, I started to kind of think... Jesus, even when we're playing well, it's it's the basics like set pieces, like coaching, that that's letting us down. But we found a way, as we have so often this season, which is something you nearly can't train. That's that's an ethos that you you, you try and instill and develop and, and bring in in terms of the mindset of the players that you have at the club. And despite the shambolic performances from this team throughout this season, one thing it has done albeit not regularly enough, but has certainly shown is an ability to come back into games that look dead and buried. And a 2-0 down to a, a pretty good Villa team, I, I didn't think we were going to get much out of that game. Despite the fact that, other than those two set pieces, I don't think Villa did a whole lot in that first half. I, I was actually quite pleased with how United played. Some very nice intricate passing, one-touch triangle plays, um, quick um, quick passages of play and, uh, and one-touch passing between the players. Um, I, I was quite encouraged by what I was seeing. And um, we showed great resilience in Garnacho to, to, to get his brace. And good old Rasmus breaking his duck and getting, uh, getting onto the scoreboard uh, in the Premier League at least. And it, it's great to see him get on, uh, get on the score sheet. But again, it was one goal from one shot. The service is still not there. Garnacho had four shots. Um, I know Rashford had a couple as well. It was interesting to see Garnacho coming off uh, the right-hand side uh, and Marcus on his, on his favourite left-hand side. I would like to see more you know, left-footed players on the left and right-footed players on the right. Um, inversion works when you don't have a central striker that you want to be feeding balls into. Um, a lot of times when people are cutting in on uh, their opposite foot, uh, it, it means they want to take shots, hence why Marcus did so well last year coming in off the left and we had no striker. Um, he could take on all the shooting responsibility himself. Um, I, I would like to see more of, you know, Garnacho on his right foot on the right. Um, and maybe Mason Mount would, uh, well, I mean, Mason Mount is right footed, but he is quite ambidextrous. Maybe playing on the left and just supplying Hoyland with, with more balls centrally and, and getting him more opportunities. Um, he seems to be doing a lot of running around and not getting a lot of service. But however, 3 2, a great result. Uh, three points uh, coming away from a game where I, I think anyone would have been happy with one. So very, very pleased indeed. Uh, however, Without further ado, uh, we got to get into the news. So let's have a take. Uh, let's uh, have a quick look at the headlines. So on the headlines today, big boost for Eric Ten Hag as Mason Mount comes back into training. Man United told to demolish Old Trafford and build innovative new stadium by architects. Man United step up chase for six foot four Italy beast seen as perfect Varane successor but Ten Hag faces a Real Madrid fight. Manchester United eye Bologna striker Joshua Zerxi ahead of January transfer window. And United could use Anthony Martial as sweetener for Inter target as sights set on transfer. And Ratcliffe ready to sell Man United stalwart as third club enter race. All that, coming up. So we're going to kick things off here with the great news that Mason Mount is returning uh, from injuries back training with the first team. So a much needed return uh, for a team that's badly in need of some uh, midfield reinforcements. So there's the man himself there. Uh, he's had a very unlucky start to his career at United. It's not a transfer I thought made a lot of sense, not a transfer I particularly wanted. 
Uh, but once someone pulls on that red shirt, I will give them my backing to the absolute bitter end. Uh, so, yeah, it's good to see him back. And uh, give it a boost on Wednesday as uh, midfielder Mason Mount returned to training with Manchester United. Um, so, I mean, what do you guys think? What well, thoughts in the, uh, in, in the comments? I put out a Twitter post um, yesterday saying that if and when he does come back and is fully fit, um, who would you drop? Um, if, if, if anyone, a lot of people actually answered no one. Um, I gave the option, would you drop Garnacho, uh, Rashford or Ericsson? Um, if Mount was to come in, not necessarily to start, but I mean, if he's to come into the 11, even as a substitute, who should be coming off? I mean, obviously his position at Chelsea was to play centrally and wide left. Uh, he is a right-footed player. He is ambidextrous, can use his, his, both of them quite, quite well. So you can play him in either wing. Um, but again, he he had that inverted role uh, at Chelsea, which is it, which is obviously the kind of the fashionable uh, way to do things at the moment. Uh, so not featured for United since November 11th, having been out of action with an injury. The 24 year old st stepped up his recovery in midweek by getting back to uh, training on the pitch. So I'd say it's going to be still be a, a number of weeks now. Of course, after New Year's, there's going to be a two week break until the Premier League resumes. So hopefully, over those two weeks, Mason can get his fitness up and get ready for when the Premier League uh, resumes. So Mount shared an image of himself uh, in training adding in his instagram post hope you had a great christmas reds can't wait to get out there with the lads um yeah uh and i think uh all fans should be getting behind uh this man uh coming back and, and giving us a few options up front and in midfield two areas where we've kind of been struggling to be honest we've been struggling all over the pitch uh, but it'd be great to have mason mount back into the fold Next up, United to demolish Old Trafford and build innovative new stadium uh, told by architects. So let me just enlarge this a little bit. So United told to demolish Old Trafford and build innovative new stadium by architects. Doesn't look so bad when you see it like that, does it? Um, and for anyone watching who hasn't visited uh, Old Trafford, I highly recommend you get yourselves down there. Um, despite all the complaints about Old Trafford and how it's not modern and, you know, all the, all the diff different bits and pieces that need to be uh, fixed, which no doubt do, um, it's still a fucking great day out. It's awesome. I love going to that place. It's, uh, it's great. Try and get there once a year, but um, I might try and get there. Again, uh, later on this year. So United have been told by architects in charge of their redevelopment um, that they should probably knock down the stadium. Now, it would be the most expensive option, so of course the architects are going to recommend that. Uh, but there is a little bit of method to their madness. It was announced on Christmas Eve. Um, so Jim Ratcliffe has got 25%. Uh, so Daily Telegraph says that Ratcliffe and his team will undertake a very detailed scoping exercise on what needs to be done at Old Trafford before work begins. So Populous... You can see the name here. Um, they are the architect uh, consultants uh, that United have brought in in April uh, to create a plan for Old Trafford with the view of upgrading it. Now, of course, these plans are going to be discussed with uh, Ratcliffe um, during these. Uh, I don't want to say, I'm going to say takeover. I know it's not a full takeover, but it's a partial takeover. So I'm just going to use the word takeover uh, before anyone gets all uppity um, that the Glazers still own the club. I know that. Um, so United will embark on either a small makeover project, expansion of the South Stand over the adjacent railway, uh, and complete redevelopment of the existing ground or the creation of an entirely new stadium. Um, now, the romantic in me would, would hate to say, uh, say goodbye to Old Trafford and, and build a new stadium. Uh, we we turned down um, Man City Stadium when it was made available to us after the Olympics because we didn't want to leave Old Trafford, um, which in hindsight... I can see why we didn't because of the history of Old Trafford and you know you want you want to keep your old ground but if you have a brand new stadium that's been built by the British government for an Olympics and it's just sitting there and you can take it for free um or buy it for a very very low amount I mean that's that's a couple of billion back in your pocket that's almost the price of the entire club uh, in a free stadium there you go um but they decided to be traditionalists and it's funny you're, you give you give shit to the glazers all the time about being completely money focused and greedy bastards but um when they had the chance to get a whole new stadium for now they they turned it down probably on the recommendation of the board that all oh, the fans that already hated them would probably be outside with pitchforks waiting to lynch them if they binned old trafford in favor of a new stadium but you know such is the fickle nature of this game and the fans that are involved, including myself. Chief Executive of Populous, Chris Lee, reckons building a new stadium may well turn out to be the most cost-effective solution as they work alongside management consultants, legends international, as they devise uh, a plan for the club. When asked what his preference would be, he told the Daily Telegraph. 
I may well turn out to be the most cost effective. Yes, the initial outlay is obviously the highest of the three options, but there is so much land available to develop there. They could carry on using the existing ground while building work is underway, meaning no decline in match day revenues, which is, you know, uh, a very good point. Architecturally, in the space available, you could do something really innovative and exciting. There would be no space constrictions. We've done work with Legends to look at all the feasibility options, multiple different versions of renovations of Old Trafford, and also what a new build could potentially look like. All of it focused on how we can create an amazing fan experience in United are very focused on that. On whether they could leave Old Trafford untouched, I think that would be unwise, and I believe there is recognition within the club that something has to be done. That is positive. Uh, the building is reaching the end of its natural life. The cabling, electricity supplies, everything is near, nearing its sell-by date. And the interiors are very cramped and difficult in places. I would say updating is crucial, not just to maintain the club's position, but just to keep the place functional, uh, which is quite alarming. As far as we understand, the plans have been on hold during the sale process, but we believe the ideas we presented are very robust. Uh, so yeah, some interesting approaches there. Um, I would... Hate to see Old Trafford knocked uh, and a new stadium developed, but I mean, listen, it's it, they're just coordinates on a map. You can still rename the new stadium Old Trafford, and um, you know you can still keep the history. At the end of the day, it's just it's a patch of grass and seats around it, and the fans and the team are the ones that make the match day exper uh, experience real. Tottenham, Man City, Arsenal, West Ham, um, a lot of clubs have just upped and left. Um, their old stadiums because you know you just have to enter into the new and i would while i would be sad to see the old trafford of old go um you know you, you got to evolve or die and uh whatever is best for the club and the fans whichever gives us the most revenue modernizes the club the best way and gives manchester united the best platform on which to build its future i'm all for that so whether that's old trafford or a new development Let's see what happens. But um, whatever is best for the club, I am fully, fully behind. Okay, so United step up chase for six foot four. Italy beast seen as perfect Varane successor, but Ten Hag faces Real Madrid fight. There is the young man in question over there who, to be fair, I think the hair kind of gives him a bit of a mega mind <laughs> kind of shaped head. Uh, and there's our boy, uh, Rafael Varane, there on uh, the left. Giorgio Scalvini, uh, the name of this particular young man. So United reportedly ready to make a firm approach to sign Atalanta defender Giorgio Scalvini. Now, what I've heard is they've put a 50 million price tag on his head and they're not really willing to do business until the summer, uh, which makes sense. Uh, but it does seem that United need reinforcements in January. Now, of course, Jean-Claire Tadebo and Goncalo Inacio are two of the big names being linked as well. Uh, with Harry Maguire probably ready to go, Johnny Evans being quite old, Raphael Varane being looked as if he could be shipped out, and Victor Lindelof probably coming to the end of his time. It would not surprise me if United went for at least two, if not three, uh, central defenders to provide some competition and development uh, within the United defensive ranks, particularly with Martinez kind of having those injury concerns. Um, it might be you know, interesting uh, for United to kind of, you know, stack out the back line with young, fit defenders. That's always been our problem. We've had a lot of defenders, but they just don't stay fit. Um, whether it's Eric Bailly, Phil Jones, Raphael Varane. Um, and now, of course, we've got Lissandro Martinez in there as well uh, on the on the, on the the physio table. Uh, so it goes on to say here, um, okay, it's all the kind of the usual guff. Um so currently back in favor under Ten Hag, Varane has appeared uh, fifteen uh, in 15 United games this season, also suffering a spell out of the side too. So there's a lot of talk that he will be sold in Varane, that United want to sell him. Then there's talk that Varane doesn't want to go anywhere. Then there's talk that other sides might be coming in for him, namely Real Madrid and potentially Bayern Munich as well, which we'll talk a little bit about later on. During that point, we revealed how the 30-year-old former Madrid man had emerged as the latest big money target for clubs in Saudi. Uh, so lots of different options for Varane. Listen, I mean, he's a Rolls Royce of a defender. It, uh, I'd hate to leave a fit Varane, um, or uh, sorry, hate him to see him leave, um, but he's just unreliable in terms of fitness. Um, since then, momentum around the story has snowballed somewhat, though it has since been claimed that while Varane does feel somewhat uneasy at United, he will delay any move away until the end of the season, which also makes sense. Um, nonetheless, it suggests United will still look to move Varane on if a sizable offer came their way amid ongoing links with both Madrid and Bayern, both of whom would like to strengthen uh, their defensive options. Uh, so yeah, 
Scalvini is now being seen as the replacement for uh, Varane. Uh, young lad, six foot four. I believe he's only 20 years of age. He's seven times capped for Italy. A uh, six foot four. He's a big lad. Uh, and he's regarded as one of the best young defenders in Serie A. So, however, having uh, spent big on raiding Atalanta for Hoyland over the summer, the Serie A side have warned that it will take another sizable chunk uh, to get Scalvini. Um, so, yeah, 50 million euro here is, is the price being quoted. Revealing what he knows, Italian journalist Alfredo Padula has confirmed it would take a sizable fee for United to sign Scalvini. It is useless to compare Atalanta's jewel to some top club for the winter transfer session. We are referring to Giorgio Scalvini and Tion Koopminers rightly requested and courted. Scalvini has several top clubs behind him. So it looks like there's a lot of a lot of interest in this kid. But Atalanta, barring sensational surprises and crazy offers, has decided to postpone the discussion until next summer. They do not intend to deprive themselves of the jewels in January. What a poet this man is in the presence of an interesting ranking. Whatever that means, uh, Mr. Padula. Scalvini is contracted until 2028 and played 74 times for the Borgamo side, scoring four times. So yeah, another little interesting link in the centre half stakes. What is clear from all the stories coming out of Old Trafford uh, with regards to transfers, centre halves are absolutely top of the list. Uh, so yeah, let's see. There we go. And they're all young. We don't seem to be linked with any kind of 26, 27, 28-year-old established centre halves. All the centre halves we've been linked with are young uh, and considered the best either in the respective teams or in the respective leagues. Uh, so yeah, let's see what happens. United Eye Bologna striker Joshua Zirksi ahead of January transfer window. So of course United being linked with the likes of uh, Ser Hugarassi at Stuttgart. Uh, seems he's having a bit of a flash in the pan uh, season. Not a bad striker, but at the age of 27 seems to kind of be coming into uh, a, a bit of a purple patch. Uh, could you, could United kind of have their pants pulled down again by chasing what, it, what what is the new shiny thing for three or four months and then finding themselves with a misfiring striker yet again? Uh, who knows? But United are keen on adding Bologna striker Joshua Xerxes to their squad, who seems to be doing reasonably well at Bologna since his uh, move from Bayern Munich, where he had been for about five years. Tottenham and Arsenal also uh, could battle it out for Bournemouth's in, uh, for, uh, inform forward Dominic Solanke, who's also uh, kicking ass in, in the league at the moment. Uh, so let's kind of scroll down here. United eye Bologna striker Xerxes, former Bayern Munich striker Joshua Xerxes, is a target for United, the German side, have a buyback clause for the player. Uh, I think they have a buyback close of 22 million uh, pounds or euro uh, and get first option on him. I don't think they're going to be getting him when they've just, you know, spent 100 million on Kane and he's definitely not going to be starting. So as a young lad who left Munich to, to try and get first team football, I doubt he's going to be going back to Munich anytime soon. Uh, Hoyland's failure to score a Premier League goal after 14 appearances. That is no longer accurate after his winner against uh, Villa. You know, I've now been linked with Bologna Hotshot Xerxes. So yeah, he's got um he's I think he's got seven goals and two assists uh in 17 games for Bologna this season. Not a bad return for a young lad in a team uh that's kind of you know floating around the mid the, the, the mid-table area uh, of Syria. Ah, now we got four goals in 12 games for Munich um as a as a uh, as a young lad, which isn't bad. One in three for a young lad uh, breaking into a Bayern team uh, ain't bad at all. So they they make mention here of Serhu Gorassi, as we mentioned earlier, recently tipped for a January move, but uh, the aforementioned report claims that United won't be pursuing a deal. Probably makes a bit of sense. Um, I don't think that would be a wise... Um, it wouldn't be a wise move for United. If they got a loan until the end of the season, kind of like Amrabat, you know, suck it and see, get yourself some six months, see if you can kind of... Uh, Ride the 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 Gerhu Sarasi or Serhu Gorasi wave, because uh, he seems to be in a real real rich vein of form. Um, but United, I think, going for for more young talent, it would seem that I, I it's quite clear that Ten Hag wants to build a team of young, hungry, um, high potential players and mold a team as opposed to pursuing the, what has been United's transfer strategy for a long time, going after very overpriced, hyperinflated, uh, established professionals who might maybe have some injury records, disciplinary problems, might be at the end of their you know, road with, with another club and maybe looking for a final payday. It seems United want young, hungry players they can mold, indoctrinate, uh, create a new culture and ethos uh, behind some of the best talent that, that Europe has to offer. And I, for one, 
I'm absolutely behind that. Uh, instead, Xerxes emerged as an alternative target valued at around 30 million euro. Bayern, though, have implemented a buyback clause. I don't think there's any fear about that. There's the young man himself. Um, seems to be doing very, very well at Bologna. Uh, so congrats to him. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens in January. But one thing is for certain, uh, we can't rely on Martial and Hoyland needs help. And we need someone up front who can stick the ball in the onion net and someone that Hoyland can either compete with or learn from. Uh, ideally. So United uh, can use Anthony Martial as sweetener for inter-targeted sights set on transfer. Uh, so United have an opportunity to ditch Martial in a potential swap for inter-left-back Federico DeMarco. Now, I don't know how much I'd um, I'd believe this because of all the defensive areas um, that need attention, left-back is, is probably the area, despite all the craziness around that position. Uh, during the first part of the season uh, due to injury with with Regulon Shaw and Malassia coming back. Um, I don't think uh, DeMarco will be starting ahead of uh, Shaw. They're saying here that there's worry about Shaw's fitness and, and things like that. So uh, let, let's go on and have a look. United will not be triggering the one-year extension Martial's contract. Of course, it's a million a month to have him on the books. So it'll cost them 12 million quid to extend that contract. And I don't see anyone paying anywhere close to 20 million for him. So, um, sorry, just move my camera there. There we go. Um, so yeah, it just seems like, um, yeah, it's probably best if all, all ties are cut. However, there could be an opportunity to do something in January. Italian outlet La Gazzetta della Sport claimed that interview Martial as the perfect backup to Lissandro Martinez and Marcus Thoram. So they've got their sets, their sights set on the dwindling United man. Uh, United are keen on bringing Inter left back to Marco, who they value at 50 million. Now, that's very nice of them to value him at that. Uh, he's not worth 50 million quid. Uh, Inter seems to be doing very well in Syria at the moment, but um, paying 50 million quid for any fullback in the Italian league is is definitely overpayment. Um, so a short list of targets have been drawn up. And um, yeah, DeMarco seems to feature highly on that. The 27-year-old uh, doing well with Inter at the moment. Um, and he's been unable to agree a new contract and they've placed a 50 million price tag on him. Now, of course, all Italian clubs are incredibly desperate for money, um, especially uh, the Milan club. So United still have to consider financial fair play regulations, uh, prompting fears that they will not be able to complete a deal for DeMarco. If I had 50 million burning a hole in my pocket, the last thing I'm doing is going after a left back. So I don't know how much... Uh, stock we can put in this story but alas i am just a bringer of news um yeah that's pretty much it united would likely need to sign another striker to compensate for Martial's departure and that's exactly it i mean bringing in a left back that we don't need and getting rid of a striker which we do need uh, even if it is uh, anthony Martial who doesn't score uh yeah uh, a funny one this i would have a pinch of salt with that story. And then finally, Ratcliffe ready to sell United Stalwart as third club enter race. So the report is Bayern sporting director Christoph Freund is ready to lodge a 20 million bid for Varane. Personally, I think that's too low, despite Varane uh, being the wrong side of 30. He's still got three or four years left in him. Um, and although his wages would probably be very high, uh, 20 million quid for Varane, I think is maybe a little bit low especially when you consider what you might be able to get for, for him from Saudi. And would we be able to replace Varane? Um, 20 million. It could go towards one of those younger lads. So, so who knows? Maybe we are better off just cutting our losses. But 17 million pounds for someone that we paid nearly 40 million for like three, four years ago. Um, I don't know. But again, he is the wrong side of 30 and he does, does, does have injury worries. Uh, with Ratcliffe of the mind to accept the bid and sell the player for less than half the price United shelled out for services back in 2021. So he's only been here about what, two and a half, three years? Uh, whether United accept the offer remains to be seen, with Bayern also hoping Varane helps them seal the deal by accepting a salary some way lower than his current 300 and forty thousand pound a week wages so yeah interesting the report however states that ten hag would be of the mind to reject any and all approaches for Varane next month especially with mcguire lindelof and martinez all currently sidelined that does make a lot of sense uh, unless he brings someone in but you know we'll see uh asked about the chance of the player moving on earlier this month uh ten hag stated rafa Varane. i don't know what you're talking about it's rumors, very important player, but there's internal competition and there should be at a top club as we are. If Rand does indeed stay at Old Trafford until the summer reports in France now state that his former club Lens will look into a possible deal. Shut up. Uh, any such move would be difficult. No shit. Um, yeah, and that is pretty much it for the news this morning. So what are your thoughts on the news today? Uh, thoughts in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, with Mount coming back, do we... 
bring him in to start for Rashford. Has Rashford done enough to, to kind of warrant starting? I mean, despite having a reasonably okay game uh, against Villa, I mean, having laid out 60 million for Mount and him coming back from injury, not really getting a chance to establish himself in the team. Uh, should he be given a run? I mean, has Rashford done enough to keep him out? Has Ericsson done enough to keep him out? Personally, I'd be keeping Ericsson in the team. Um, he's probably the best ball playing midfielder that we have and I I think the combination of him and Maynou uh, could be could be very potent and um, with Mason Mount maybe even able to kind of track back a little bit and use his energy and enthusiasm and, and, and speed uh, to come back and help out in defence and, and, and maybe come in and uh, and come in as a, a number 10 and as a forward central player if Bruno does find himself in a more um, uh, withdrawn role uh, further uh, down, down United's defensive end I, I think it's worth experimenting with. Uh, I think Rashford has not done even close to enough uh, in terms of ability, uh, output, attitude. Uh, I think it's time maybe for Mason Mount to get a crack on that left-hand side and, and come in centrally and, and kind of rotate and, and see what he can do. I, I'd be very excited to see that. Uh, and in terms of strikers, uh, what should United do? Should we hang on to Martial until the end of the season? Should we bin him in January and, and try and get someone else in? Should it be Serhu Garassi? Um, should it be Xerxi? Should there be someone else in mind? Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. As always, thank you very, very much for joining me. Uh, I'm going to try and get more episodes out now. Obviously, Christmas is always a bit of a mad time, but uh, I should be able to uh, uh, get, get a few more videos out. So thanks once again for joining. Uh, hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit that notification, and I'll see you on the next one.